the Super Takumar 50mm f1.4 7 element is a lens that a lot of people are talking about these days. Um, the one that I've been using, the one that's pictured here, is 7 element. I haven't tested it versus anything else, and I've been shooting it mostly on a Fujifilm X-H1. So let's get all of that out of the way. Um, I've used this lens a lot since acquiring it about two years ago. Um, it does great with color. It does great with black and white. Um, the 1.4 lets me use it for a little bit more uh, experimental uses sometimes. I like to... Uh, I like to push it with the light. Um, some of you know I don't really use uh, more expensive modern lenses uh, with autofocus, so uh, getting down to 1.4 is very useful. Um, looking at it, it's got a great build, great aesthetics, um, and it takes photos really well with the Fuji uh, X-H1. Of course, it uh, acts a little bit more like a portrait lens uh, at that point. Yeah, we uh, have to consider the APS sensor and what that does to a full frame lens, but uh, I don't mind this at all. I know a lot of people say that uh, this lens is supposed to be full frame. You're not getting what you want out of it unless it's on. Uh, usually people say, you need an A7, you need an A7. Well, it's, it works great on the X-H1. I, I really like where it sits in uh, my kit. And like I said, I use it a lot. I use it a lot for color photography. Um, I use it a lot for pushing higher ISO. Um, I think the uh, bokeh in particular is uh, very pleasing with a higher ISO. Uh, and you get shots that, um, you know, do start to have that dreamy feeling, that dreamy uh, 60s, 70s wide open feeling. Um, which is nice. It's usually what I'm looking for uh, when I put on this lens. So, uh, you know, some of the drawbacks, it's not the sharpest lens, but it's certainly sharp enough where you really won't notice in most situations. Um, I think for me, the biggest issue is I don't like using these older lenses to do uh, landscapes in most positions because I find that the trees uh, really struggle uh, unless the lighting is just perfect to draw out the detail. Um, but I do, whenever there's, you know, fun, fun things going on with light, uh, where I can play with the contrast and really just add tones, uh, this lens really shines in those situations. And if I turn up the ISO, you know, and get a little bit of extra creaminess in the photo, uh, I end up, I end up really happy with the results. And, uh, it's a very usable lens, uh, frankly. Like I said, it's in my kit uh, quite a bit. I do keep it on uh, the helicoid uh, adapter so that I can push it a little bit closer to, and to even get uh, more uh, bokeh and uh, smaller depth of field when desired. Um, and it's very helpful because uh, there are times where it feels like the focusing distance isn't quite close enough. So uh, all in all, I really like this lens. I use it a lot. Um, I don't have a lot of other uh, 50 millimeters or especially like modern 50 millimeters to compare it to. I'm not a big autofocus uh, shooter. I like to think about the focus and the aperture. And this has been great you know it beats out the other 50s that i use for color photography and uh i probably will keep using it for a long time well thanks a ton folks for dropping by for this review we love sharing our photos uh, on youtube and especially hearing from uh, other people and what they think and hey if you want to support the channel make sure to hit that subscribe button and you can check out some of our other content uh, we're going to try to put out some more uh, gear videos because we you know, who, who doesn't love gear? Um, and we certainly do. So thanks for sticking around uh, for this video. And uh, you rock.